In our second demonstration, we will illustrate the use of VLANs as a tenant network virtualization technology. Um, in the first use case, we had statically provisioned VLANs which were shared amongst tenants. Here, we're letting Neutron manage the VLANs for a given tenant, and we'll put L3 subnets on top of those dynamically provisioned VLANs. Through the LBAS plugin, the F5 ADC will provision the appropriate VLANs as well as allocate any L3 addresses it needs to perform its services. This is a very important use case because it allows tenant networks to be extended beyond the virtual realm into established networking today so you can have hardware servers and infrastructure as a service cloud instances share the same L2 networks. All right, welcome back. We're under our second demonstration, and this time what we're gonna do, let's go back to our little key down here in the bottom right again. We're gonna create a VIP on the same subnet we did last time. Let's act like that's an internet-facing VIP. We can talk to it in the existing data center, but this time we're gonna build a pool to a VLAN which is defined for a particular tenant. So this is a tenant network virtualization using VLANs. Uh, we've got two instances that are on a Neutron subnet that's been defined on this tenant defined VLAN. We also have little illustrations here showing other things. Maybe it's a directory server, maybe it's a database. Um, we can talk across this like it's any other VLAN. Um, let's go look at what that looks like to our tenant. So here under tenant, you see I've got a network and you see I can edit it. I couldn't edit these provider ones, but if I click on this one, I can edit it. I can define subnets on it. I can do this. This is why we're saying it's network virtualization for the tenant using a VLAN. It is a VLAN, but a tenant can edit it. Tenant could, could uh, uh, define things on it. Um, I put my instances on it already. Let's go back to load balancers. Now instead of walking through the Horizon GUI again, I'm going to uh, cheat a little bit and I'm going to use a DevOps client. All this is doing is making the same um, API calls to Neutron to build my load balancer. Let's build it. Okay, it's done. And let's see what it did for me. This time I created a pool and notice it's called VLAN to tenant VLAN and notice my members in it, they're 1006422. That was the sub that I saw that my tenant defined for me. Uh, 2022, there they are. Um, there's my pool, I've got a VIP. Again, the VIP is on uh, 62110. Let's, let's go look what that did on the big IP this time. Okay, there's my second VIP. It's uh, 110, here it is. And you'll notice a couple things, the pool, that it's defined. Let's go look at that pool. The members defined for my tenant VLAN, however, have this funny looking decoration on it. Now, what is that? Well, in Big IP world, that's called a route domain. That gives us layer three um, route table segmentation. And you'll see that we dynamically built that based upon the idea that you told us that you had this network that was defined for the tenant subnet. It wasn't shared, it wasn't external, it was for this tenant subnet, so we decorated the route domain for it. Again, we built out all the necessary pieces. There's the uh, VLAN that got created. Here's the layer three self IP on this device that got created. Here's the uh, SNAT entry that got created. Again, notice the decorations on it. So we have full L3 segmentation for this tenant um, on top of this VLAN. And then here's my virtual server. Now let's uh, make sure it's working. Again, 10.062.1.10. Go, and there it is. And you'll notice the pool member shows up in black there, and it shows me what subnet I'm on. Here's the VIP we connected to. Here's the tenant VLAN we talked across the big IP as, a, as an LBAS service. So very good. There's our second demo. Uh, existing provider uh, VLANs on the front for the VIP, talking to VLANs as a network virtualization technology on the back of the big IP.